Hi, my name is Professor Schwarzenegger and welcome to another session on how to use Excel. In today's session we're going to learn how to use Excel to solve what's uh, commonly a simple business problem where we have to determine um, how long it would take to, to break even, what we call break even analysis. And so in this particular example we have a new pizza oven that we want to purchase to you know, sell, make pizzas and, and we have to sell them. So we have to recoup the cost of that oven over the number of pizzas that we sell. It's based upon the old formula that we used and learned about in grade school. And that's the old y is equal to mx plus b or the formula for a straight line. So you can see in this particular area we, I've got that formula set up y is equal to mx plus b where y is the dependent variable, x is the independent variable, m is considered the slope, and b is what we call the y-intercept. So that means uh, we can plug in any value for x, and if we've got m and we've got b, we can calculate what y is. So in this case, uh, we, we base, uh, this problem is based upon uh, selling pizzas. And what's our total cost for the pizzas? So in fact, every time we sell a pizza we have what we call a variable cost and that's represented by this five dollars per pizza so this five dollar takes into account the cost of the dough, the cost of the sauce, the cost of the cheese, even the cost of the person making the pizza in terms of their hourly wage and you might calculate by saying okay it takes a person five minutes to make a pizza I pay them X amount per hour therefore that labor cost for that pizza is uh, you know x times uh, uh, 5 over divided by 60. So uh, since they're 5 minutes and 60 minutes in an hour times my hourly wage, uh, that gives me my cost for making one pizza. And then it might also include the cost of the heating the oven to, to actually bake the pizza. So whatever, you can build that into the variable cost. So that means every time we make a pizza it costs us five dollars. Now whether we sell one pizza or a thousand pizzas, we still have to pay off that oven at ten thousand dollars. So this formula is based upon the fact that M in this case is the five dollars. So every time we make a pizza X, we have to multiply it by five bucks. And then to that we have to add the cost of the oven because that's a fixed cost. So in fact this formula lends itself very well to the problem. So our total cost every time for making pizza is going to be equal to the number of pizzas we make x times the cost per pizza or variable cost which is five and then to that we have to add the cost of the oven which is ten thousand dollars so over here I've set this problem up so in this column we're going to have the number of pizzas we're selling so you can see I have put in the first two numbers and so I click highlight that and then I can go to my fill handle and drag those down and I'm going to go to about uh, 8,000 pizzas. So I can plug, every what I'm going to do with my formula, I'm going to plug this value over here into this formula over here. So the formula that we're going to set up is equal to, so all formulas begin to equal, equal signs, so essentially we're going to say y, uh, equal, this is the y is equal to mx plus b. So where do we find our M? Well, M is the variable cost, so we're going to click on that. So we're going to click on the M. And now, because we're always going to go back to this particular formula, we're going to use absolute addressing, which we can do by pressing the F4 key one time. And we get dollar sign C dollar sign 11. So that means every time I run this formula, I'm going to go back to this very cell, which contains the variable cost for my pizza. So that's time. So where am I going to find the number of pizzas that I sell? Well, I'm going to find that over here. So I just click on that. So in fact, it's going to be equal to dollar sign C dollar sign 11, which represents the variable cost times the number of pizzas I sell. And I'm going to find that over in cell G5. Okay. So that's the basis. That's the start of this formula. But remember, I have to add my fixed cost, which is the cost of the pizza oven which I find over here and since I'm always going to go back to this particular uh, cell for that uh, cost of that pizza oven again I use an absolute address or in this case dollar sign C dollar sign 6 so that's the basis of my formula and I'm press enter and you can see the formula tells me that if I sell no pizzas 
my costs are going to be ten thousand dollars which is the cost of the pizza and every time I sell a pizza I have to add to that cost so in fact since I've done a good job with this formula just to kind of show you I'm going to make this big here so we can see that that's the formula is equal to C11 times the number of pizzas I sell which is over here G5 plus my fixed cost or the cost of the new oven which is over in cell C6 but again you can see I've used absolute addressing for the variable cost and the fixed cost and that's great so now all I have to do is fill this formula down and you can see that um, when I sell 5,000 pizzas well it's going to cost me $35,000 totally and again that includes the cost of the oven so you can do quick math 5 times 5 bucks is uh, 5,000 times 5 bucks is $25,000 plus my $10,000 for the oven that's where I get that $35,000 so that's my formula and so in fact I can actually take this formula or take the results of this formula and create a graph and we're going to create you know once we highlight this information uh, we're going to go insert and we're going to go we're going to do a line graph and we do that now um, the way Excel works you can see that's this orange guy over here that's my total cost and this blue line represents these values over here in fact I don't need that here I just go there and so in fact I can do that. Now the question is where do these numbers 1 through 17 come from? Well Excel sometimes doesn't get it right so we can actually go back and right click and um, select data. So just to show you what I'm doing I'm going to my graph area and I'm taking a look at that I'm going to select data. So I'm going to select data and you can see that uh, the horizontal categories is this stuff here and I'm going to edit that stuff I'm going to get you can see um, uh, this is the total cost of the peaches that's there and I'm going to edit that and so what it asked me what is the label range so so I'm going to select the range and I'm actually going to select over here Okay. And you now see that I now have the cost, the actual peaches. You can see how it's rotated to make room. And if I don't, if I, um, I can move this chart to another worksheet called cost of pizza. So there I have a chart which now shows me, um, cost of my pizza and then let me move this around here so we can actually see what's going on so now you can see I've got my chart that says the total cost of my pizzas and you can see if I sell zero pizzas my total cost is that ten thousand dollars for that pizza oven so in fact the formula is working properly so let's go back to our pizza data now being a smart businessman I know that uh, I, I could buy these pizzas pre-made already warm um, and so I just want to see what that would cost me to do and, and in fact you can see that if I went out and bought the pizzas uh, in fact uh, Cobble Skill's example there's Wolfie's Pizza uh, out on the east side of Cobble Skill that actually will make pizzas that you can take home and, and put in the oven yourself and sell them pretty much pre-made so the idea is I can either do them in-house or I can outsource them. So if I outsource the pizzas, they cost me seven bucks a piece. So I can do that same thing for total cost of outsourcing pizzas. Now, what's the benefit of outsourcing the pizzas? Well, guess what? I don't have to buy that pizza oven. So in fact, I can now say my total cost of outsourcing pizzas is equal to my outsourcing cost, which is that over there. And I'm since I no, I'm going to have to come back to that. I'm going to press my F4 key and times the number of pizzas I have to buy, which I find over in this cell over here. And so you can see that if I sell zero pizzas, I don't have any costs. However, if I sell pizzas, I'm going to have to pay that. And so uh, I'm actually going to fill this down here. 
And so you can see that at some point in time, um, the cost for buying pizzas is going to exceed the cost for making pizzas. And you can see that at $35,000 or at 5,000 pizzas. Um, and if I sell more than 5,000 pizzas, I'm ahead of the game because at that point, it's going to cost me more to uh, uh, buy my pizzas than it, than it would for me to make my pizzas. And so, in fact, I can add this data to my chart by going over to this chart here. Once again, I can select data, and now I'm going to add. series name I've got to go pizza data outsource and the data is going to be this stuff down here and again you can now see that here this is the cost of outsourcing my pizzas and at 5,000 they they actually meet and they're equal. So in fact, what we say in this particular instance, my break-even cost is 5,000 pizzas, or my break-even quantity, I'm sorry, is 5,000 pizzas. And so in fact, if I sell more than 5,000 pizzas, I'm ahead of the game if I buy the oven. So what you have to do as a business person is say, okay, how long will it take me to sell 5,000 pizzas? And because it's going to take you that many pizzas to recoup the cost of the oven, and there might be some other associated costs with that. So that's an example of taking an Excel problem, applying a formula, and this is a very basic y is equal to mx plus b formula for a straight line, and then employing both relative and absolute addressing, and then taking that information and plotting it in a chart that will do that. In fact, we can now spruce up this chart a little bit, and uh, if we go to design, we can actually come over here to quick layouts and do something like this. And then we can actually put in a chart title. Then we can say, okay, cost of pizzas house versus outsource. And we now have a chart that says, okay, here we have an example of the cost of what's going to cost us to do the pizzas, um, either in-house or out outsourcing them, and that we can see we have a break-even cost. In fact, you can even do is insert a little um, shape here, and we can actually draw a little circle there, uh, format that circle a little bit, uh, no fill, and we can make it there, and then we can actually in, um, insert a text box, and say, And so we can actually say the break-even quantity is right here. Oopsie daisy, I moved things around. And um, there we go. So there we have it. How to calculate the cost and using Excel to do that and to create some charts. Thanks for watching. In my next short lesson, I'm going to talk about um, forecasting and creating what we call scatter charts. Thanks a lot.